let's group the different methods and we start with the creative design method. That's um, quite conventionally an engineer thinks of a new design and often the starting point is um, the conventional design uh, and then you make a cat drawing of a, of a new design. Uh, what you see in the picture is an innovative passive CPU cooler. That design has been done by some smart students of Arizona State University. And um, yeah, I truly believe it's a, it's a pretty good design. But in general, the danger here is that you create only incremental improvements. If you start from a conventional design, if you start from a, a, a conventional perspective. Um, on the bright side, it's definitely fast and low effort because um, you basically did what you have done before for other manufacturing methods. Compared to that, the biomimetic design is a very innovative approach. It has been around for some time, but now with 3D printing, we can actually build those structures which have been optimized by evolution for eons. Um, and this is learning from the best. The upside here is that it paves the way for really radical improvements. On the downside, it requires daring engineers to do that. I mean, uh, you can see here a design inspired by a sea anemone, and I would just love to see more of those designs realized. Let me give you one example to uh, fully grasp what this means for heat exchangers. This is a project which has been done by Julia, a former colleague of our Additive Minds consulting team. And she wanted to improve the coolers in the fans in front of airborne turbines. It was a very well-defined problem. And she found a really clever model in nature. She found shark gels, which um, filter out nutrition out of passing water. And she dug really deep to understand the underlying principles and um, analyzed how a shark gel works to transform this into a technical solution. You can see a beautiful technical design on the right hand side. But uh, to be honest, this was not so easy. So there were a lot of trial and errors. Uh, she experimented with a lot of different designs and made tests uh, at different uh, um, angles and velocities of the, uh, of the air flow, etc., to come up with this design. Uh, but it's a great example of how bionic design works. There is one more possibility labeled generative design here. And that means you simulate evolution in a computer. The design here was done by Hyperganic, and it's a company who did an amazing software which just does that. You give boundary conditions and then you let it run and you have a simulated evolution in your computer to come up with this truly amazing design. And you can see from looking at the picture that this is a radical improvement, definitely. Um, you can cre create completely new things. Uh, the downside here is that it takes time to set up the software. So it's not good for one-offs, but it's definitely great for a serious production or for mass customized designs. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumb up. And if you'd like to have further information about educational content or other webinars from EOS, just click the links in the description box below. We hope to see you soon in one of our next videos. Until then, go and subscribe our channel. Bye!